Hi guys, this is Ronald. Welcome back to my uh, video series about um, how to play Dungeon Universalis and this is uh, a video about the Artificial Dark player again. Um, the following part of um, the last video uh, where I showed you how to how the Artificial Dark player spawns new enemies and places obstacles and uh, power-ups for the, for the creatures um, with this um, deck. And um, this time we have a look at um, how he activates the spawned enemies and the artificial um, intelligence behind uh, the creature's movement and um, who the, uh, they will be attack and um, count as a target. And um, yeah, if you are, um, um, browse through the um, game material, you will see there's a special reference card for exactly this, creature activation, target selection, and there are special AI cards for each type of an uh, of um, a creature of the um, of the uh, of the dark player uh, or the artificial dark player to be precise. And we have a melee fighters, ranged fighters, sorcerers, undead, and so on and so on. We have a deeper look in a few minutes. And um, yes, if you um, look at the cards, uh, then you might think, oh, wait, this is pretty straightforward. Um, this is just uh, oh well, who who's uh, going to be um, activate first, um, who they will be um, who they will attack, and uh, then we have a look at this um, this uh, list here, and we will see what he's doing. Yes, and uh, yeah, in a nutshell, this is the the, um, the actions the uh, conductor for the artificial dark player will do. But it's um, as uh, um, um, on so many times this uh, in, in Dungeon Universalis. <laughs> this is not enough. There are more rules you have to know about, and you are, have to be aware of. And we have a look at this now. So when you are looking in the rule book, there's a whole chapter about the artificial dark player I showed you in the last video, and there are also pages about um, specific behaviors. Where you um, yeah, you get an explanation how to use the um, AI reference cards, um, so we can uh, put this away for the moment. And this page is much more interesting. It's about the general behavior of um, the characters and creatures of the artificial dark player. And this is a lot of stuff. Let's drop, um, these two columns. And there are many uh, fiddly um, rules in this. You should have um, read this carefully. And the, play the game is playable without it. So that's not the point. But um, there are many um, rules in this that makes the game much more um, interesting or uh, a little bit harder. And so you should be aware of this. And let's have a look what's going on here. Some of these rules are already worked um, in the cards, in the reference cards, but not everything. And this is where we are going to look now. Um, um, but b before we are doing this, we'll, um, we'll go back to the reference card for the target selection and the creature activation. And let's see, let's make it, um, let's start from the beginning. Great idea as always. And let's see. We have a creature activation. When we are going to, uh, if we have multiple creatures on the board, let maybe these guys over here, who is going to attack first? And then we have this creature activation. We will check first the creatures that have range attacks. Oh, this guy has range attack. He will attacking first. Um, then after him, they are going the spellcasters and battle wizards. And if there's a leader counting as a spellcaster or battle wizard, then he's going um, in the second position. If not, if there are rest of the creatures, all of the rest will um, will attack, except for the leaders. And after all, the leaders that are not spellcasters and battle wizards. Not so straightforward as um, you might have thought. But it's handable. And if there's, um, in any case, there's equality in the, in the order, um, the creatures with a higher VP will activate. Okay. And then, in this example, this guy is going first after this, the big baddie here. Okay, and then, if he's going to attack now, whom, um, whom, who's, who, who will he attack? 
What is his target? <laughs> and we can look at this target selection list. This is the general list and we have, we, you see the asterisk here. This is going to be interesting too. But let's have a look at the general list. Um, he will attack the enemy most, be, uh, most likely to be hit. So who's most likely to be hit? Um, in, in, if you're a melee fighter, it's um, uh, in general it's the guy with uh, the, um, uh, the baddest combat skill. Um, it's not the one with the lowest armor because this is the second point. If um, there's draw, then he's going to attack the one with the lowest armor. Um, this is always counting for uh, for all the um, the enemies in the range of the attacker. Who can he reach when he's moving uh, for a melee fighter or a not ranged fighter, and um, who is um, who he might um, attack if he's standing over here. This one is here, and this one is here. Then the most um, then the the enemy most likely to be hit is this guy because um, he has much less um, pen penalties to attack him than him. Or you have to see, you have to check the skills, the uh, whatever. So the first point is always um, the enemy most likely to be hit. Then the one with lost armor. Then the closest enemy. Then a random enemy if there's still a draw. And then there's the asterisk. The specific behavior of each type of character has priority over these criteria. So, what does this mean? For a melee fighter, there's no there's no uh, difference. For a ranged fighter, there's no difference, I guess. But if we have a look at um, maybe the undead, he has an own target priority that will override the other one. So he, the, the undead is always attacking the nearest enemy because um, this is the point where the artificial dark player is not trying to simulate a real human like um, I told you in the last video with the cards he's trying to act like a human or maybe he's trying to simulate a human dark player. In this case the AI is doing more. The AI is trying to give you a more immersive um, experience and so creatures are um, acting like uh, you would expect it from its kind. So undead are, are acting like undead and maybe uh, well, well, the animals we have AI cards for animals and they are acting like you would expe might expect from an enemy because they are also attacking the nearest enemy. They are dumb kind of dumb and um, the undead too they, they don't they don't um, they're not interested in who's the one who's uh, who, who they might attack in, in the most easy easiestly um, they just attack always the nearest enemy this uh, let's see if we have this skeleton over here the skeleton could easily uh, make it better easily run over to this uh, sorcerer which is very weak, weak combat skill, weak armor, whatever, everything is weak at this, but because this guy over here is nearer, just one space away, he will go over there and try to attack the one with a full plate armor, and that makes no sense. Then the human dark player, um, in my opinion, would never let him go over here, the human dark player would let him go over here and attack the sorcerer. But the AI is acting more Thematically, you can. Um, this um, this is your just your opinion if you think this is great or not, but that's how it's uh, meant to, to, to be played, um, and that's for the target selection. So um, you will go through this list, except <laughs> the specific behavior on the um, on the uh, AI card, or and they were, this is a great. Um, um, a great reference to the um, general behavior. There may be other rules, be like um, like oh, where's a specific target? The, here are notes about if there is a, a quest target. So um, maybe you're you're playing a, a quest where you're going to escort um, an NPC uh, through an area or whatever. Then the the, the quest topic may be um, the main goal for the dark player may be to um, to kill that one NPC. So each character will go there first. So. Um, he will try to um, to disengage or whatever. No, 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 they will not try to, to disengage, but um, um, they will always going to uh, try to kill this NPC if this is the quest target. So, on top of this um, target selection, you could um, uh, 
uh, right on, on position zero, check the quest target, <laughs> the, the quest goal, and then go for the enemy mostly like to hit, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, and this is where we are going to the general behavior chapter of the artificial dark layer. And this one says, um, if you, the, the creature who, you, who you are going to activate um, has different attacks, then he will use, um, um, if he has the possibility to carry out several attacks, um, he will use this one. It's not um, uh, meaningless if, if they are coming from spells or from skills or whatever, then um, he will do these attacks over that what's, uh, what's printed on the card. Um, if he is able to do non-offensive uh, non actions, maybe healing uh, companions or uh, uh, allies or supporting them, uh, supporting them, then he will. Then you have to roll a d6 and check on four plus. He's not going to attack. He's going to uh, perform one of these um, actions. But you have to check the, this card. Um, yes. Uh, also interesting if the creature has skills. What okay, we have a look at in a few seconds. Um, he's only allowed, each creature is allowed to do um, the same skill during the same quest only for three times. For example, let's see, let's pretend this is an ogre. And we have um, the card for an ogre here. One moment, I'm sorry. It's over here. We have this ogre card. And it says the ogre has the skill Onslaught. Onslaught is an active skill. Here's the card. You can see the, uh, with this icon, this is an active skill. Um, a passive skill might be something like you gain plus one perception or something. This is something, a skill you don't use actively. But this is uh, in, um, usually uh, um, combined with an, as an action or uh, uh, instead of an attack or whatever. And then this is an active skill and you may use this onslaught action only for three times for this ogre. If there's another ogre, then you have to count that um, in, uh, independently. So this ogre and the virtual ogre standing next to you. Oh, I have one. So this ogre can do the skill for three times. This ogre can. And you have to count it separately. Okay. This is skill limit. Um, disengaging, okay. Then we have these. Um, this not very straightforward rule of maximize the potential. The conductor has always to check um, what's the best um, decision the creature could make in uh, in, uh, in its activation, and then do this. So it's meaningless what's printed on the card. Maybe the card says um, uh, the melee fighter is doing a melee attack, but the melee, uh, the creature that um, uh, is um, uh, in the category of a melee fighter has the option to do a great skill, to cast spells, why ever it's a melee, range, a melee fighter with, a, with the ability to cast spells. Um, but let's pretend it's, it's, it could be possible. Then you have to do this. So you have always to check What's the, what are the possibilities of the creature? In most cases, it's straightforward. In most cases, you have just like here uh, a dump orc or a ranged fighter without really special active skills, and then you do that stuff. But there are maybe um, situations, um, especially when you're fighting against leaders, where you have to um, uh, where you have to go everything and check and make it uh, happen. <laughs> And so, um, and the, the last one is, is uh, the, the same. Um, if the creature can choose among several attacks or uh, different skills, it will choose to perform the most effective. Um, uh, that, that if, if you are uh, attacking an, an enemy with a heavy armor, then you are doing. Uh, then you will use the weapon that can do. Um, as much arm, um, damage as it <laughs> as could, and if it's light armor, you may use another weapon or whatever. These are the examples from here. So check this paragraph and then try to act like that, uh, like that for for the artificial dark player. And there are two, at least two. These are the ones I could figure out. There are two rules that are completely breaking with the general rules of Dungeon Universalis. It's about disengaging and it's about 
um, spells. The first one, and I asked the game's creators, um, I had a talk with them, because I, I, I thought that it was very confusing to read this, and I didn't know what they meant, and I asked, asked them, and this is their answer. So the, the text is, it's the same as on, on the reference card, if a creature tries to disengage from an enemy and fails, it will never finish its activation, it will fight in melee combat instead. So what does this mean, it will never finish its activation? If you know the rules of Dungeon Yourselves, you know if a character is trying to disengage from an enemy, and it will fail the test for it, so you have to roll and make an agility test, and if you're failing, your activation is over immediately. You may not do anything in this turn. So, this is absolutely going with this, it will never finish its activation. No kidding? I, w I already knew that. Okay, but we're going on. It will fight a melee combat instead. What does this mean? I ask them if they mean this um, This means um, he will try it to disengage one time and then his next, uh, next activation he will fight in melee or... No. This is a break of the general rule. This is meant if um, the AI card uh, tells him to, um, to, to to disengage, maybe because it's a ranged fighter, the ranged fighter will always try, if it's engaged at the beginning of his activation, it will try to disengage. Okay. And it will, if it will fail, it will gain an extra action to do a melee attack. This is what this means. So if you're failing the um, disengagement, you will uh, the, that creature will attack in melee immediately in the same activation that it should have been over now. And this is a break. Definitely. Okay, well, this is what it's meant. Um, then we have the spells. Um, there are some spell rules that are not so interesting. Um, uh, no, they are interesting, but it's not uh, for the video, it's not so important. Just read it on your own. Um, if a spellcaster casts a permanent spell effect, um, while he was upkeeping an active spell, the effects of both spells will be maintained. So this means he can make, uh, he can raise a second elementary or whatever, um, or at, at, at least may um, have two permanent spells at the same time. And this is also a break with the, with the general rules of um, spells, because the general rule spells say, and this accounts for. Um, for the heroes, for the mercenary spellcasters, and for the human dark player spellcasters, because they are th these are the rules only for the AI spellcasters. So the the human dark player, if he has a spellcaster, he's, he has to follow the general rules. If you're casting, uh, you're not allowed to uh, to cast a second permanent spell if you have already one active, but an AI spellcaster is allowed to do this. Uh huh. I don't know why, but it's that these are the rules. And I asked, also asked for this. Um, it's absolutely that what's stated there. <laughs> you have to know it. You sh and uh, at least you should have to know this. Okay. And these are all the general behavior rules. There are some I've left out um, because they're not so interesting, but you, have, you should read them. And um, yeah, this is. Um, the basics of this, and I have not much more um, prepared for this. I, I'm, um, I'm going to show you some more examples now from the AI cards, and I think then we are done. This time not 40 minutes, great! Okay, let's see. Okay, we have an AI card for melee fighters. Um, they are going always to, going to um, to engage enemies and to um, and uh, to attack them uh, in melee. Not that great surprise. Um, the opposite is a ranged fighter. Enemies with a ranged fighter icon are always trying to stay out of the um, out of reach from uh, the other from the enemies and to attack from range. No surprise here too. And if they are engaged, they always try to disengage. Um, there may be large creatures, and large creatures have a setup here. Um, they, when they are when they are placed, they, you have to roll a three d six, and then you may um, upgrade them with special skills. It never, never disengages from smaller enemies, and uh, there are special rules if they have onslaught or sweep as skills. Um, 
We have special cards for the undead, we have already seen that, they never disengage from enemies and they have a, another target priority. They always attack the nearest enemy and then the one with the lowest um, courage and they do this because um, undead um, creatures uh, usually have the the skill... Um, um, Oh my god, I've forgotten. Fearsome. Fearsome is what I was seeking for. Fearsome and Fearsome is a kind of complicated rule. And um, broken down, it's like um, if, if you're um, standing next to an, uh, a creature with the Fearsome skill, you have to make a um, courage test. So um, maybe, and if you uh, fail this, you may lose your activation. This is one part of the skill. Read it on your own. It's not that easy. There's already uh, also um, an entry in the FHQ about this. And this is why they are um, going to attack the enemies with the lowest cor um, courage. And then we have animals and vermin. We also have seen this card. Um, they are going for the nearest enemy. And um, there's also a, sp a thematically rule. So if they are wounded, so they only have one uh, life point left, then they are uh, then they then they must pass a courage test. And if they are failing this, they um, they uh, may run away from the board. And then we have also we have sorcerer rules. And they are a bit like uh, ranged ones, so uh, staying out of the melee. And um, you have to roll one day six when you're activating this, and um, to see what kind of skills they are um, trying to cast, and so uh, a lot of more um, magic-related rules. Uh, so they always try to dispel and uh, and to use uh, uh, mana potions and so. And um, yep, we have special um, a special card for flying creatures. We have uh, a special card for battle sorcerers for um, enemies with the skill berserker because they have um, also um, um, uh, the berserker skills um, have some requirements, and this card is going to try to to make it easy for you to follow them. Uh, battle sorcerers are are uh, a mix of um, of uh, spellcaster and uh, melee fighter, and uh, and then we have the leader cards, where you also like large creatures. You can upgrade the leader when you're placing them. Then you have the rules for upgrading the um, the hit points, the vitality points of the leader. When you're revealing the main room, he may ga uh, gain more actions than normally. Normally, they will have one action, and then but they maybe have uh, up to two extra actions. And why this? Um, I will make uh, a <laughs> dedicated video about this. Um, this doesn't belong here, so just accept it. You have to give them. Uh, you have to give them um, extra actions. Uh, so they can attack more often or cast more spell uh, spells more often or whatever actions. And this is a Raspel card for the uh, campaign boss. He has a special card. All right, and that's it. We're done with this. Um, there, I guess there's nothing more to say for the moment. I'm really impressed about myself. I've uh, done this um, in under 30 minutes. And um, yeah. Oh, one last, one last thing. That's always the last thing. Like in Dungeon Souls, you have always that one extra rule. I will have this for you. Oh, you will like it. I, hope. I have uploaded this to Dungeon. Eh, to Dungeon. Eh, I have uploaded this to Board Game Geeks. These are my AI creatures rework rules. Um, I try to um, to rework every creature card. Every so a replacement for these cards to make it easier to read and easier to follow and to add more from the general guy and um, general um, behavior rules so you will always have this non effect offensive action uh, um, um, as a first type of attack if a creature has a non offensive action and um, there are also rules that if uh, um, a creature has a spell um, he will cast the spell over melee. Even if he is a melee AI type, he will use the spell. He will also use ranged. Maybe he has a dagger or something that he can throw. He will use ranged and not attack in melee. And um, there are rules for the disengagement, clearly, to read. There are rules for the target prior priority where I 
put the quest target at the first position or the engaged enemy and um, when how do they activate what are they doing when they are getting activated um, maybe they have defense options like a ranged fighter and the ranged fighters ha may use defensive shots and they are using it how do they act when they are um, pushing an enemy or they are able to push an enemy do they, they are they going to do this or not and whatever i have done this for all the creature types except for the leader at the moment we have a sorcerer over here we have battle sorcerer animals ah yes this the rest berserker flying undead everything's here um, you can download it at Board Game Geeks. And um, yeah, I hope uh, you, um, this will help you because it's really, really straightforward. You just have, if you're going to activate an undead creature, you will just uh, set up, okay, I've already done this, but then I will use this, this, and no, it's not going to disengage because it's not engaged. For me, it's much easier than to read the AI cards and um, to think about all the general behavior rules we have and this is much more straightforward at least for me and i hope for you too and with these words i'm going to finish and to end this video um, thanks for the subscribers many greetings to all the new subscribers i'm very very impressed um, that i've reached over 150 um, subscribers um, thanks for your attention and thanks for your comments. Uh, please rate the video up or down so I can see I'm doing my job good or not. Um, as always, I'm going to tell you now that please always read the rules on your own. I'm doing these videos just for uh, as an addition for them and not as a replacement. Um, if you're going want to play Dungeon Hardest, you always have to read the rulebook at least once. And uh, <laughs> um, I think at least three or four times but you will see maybe you're much smarter than me thank you again see you bye bye